a lot going on. So. I haven't ate all day. How are y'all doing? How was your Christmas? Where are y'all tuning in from? How was y'all Christmas? I'm good. Well, I'm, let me tell the truth. I don't know what I got sick by, but I ate. Iowa, what's up? I'm in Florida right now. Pumping on Beach, Florida. My Christmas was... Why don't you celebrate Christmas? Um, but because that's Jesus' birthday. Um, my Christmas was okay. I spent it home, literally kind of bored, and I went out later on. But then I got the worst stomach cramp, like, stomach cramp, and I had you know whatever. I don't want to get too TMI, but um, I don't know if it was the cheesecake. So I'm never eating cheesecake again. One thing about me, if I have a bad experience with a food, I'm never gonna eat it again. Hey, Elda. I'm never going to eat it. Like, I was, I'm still sick. I haven't ate. Right now, it's 2.31 p.m. I have not eaten anything because I'm so scared to eat because I don't want to go to the bathroom. Uh, that's that's just my Christmas. That's how my Christmas went. I, I'm used to, so I'm not that hungry, but I feel like, like my body, my stomach's not growling because I'm so used to fasting. So my body like, yeah, she's not eating again. So I just been drinking water. But I actually want to eat. I don't feel like I'm hungry, but I am hungry. Um it's is yeah, you can look at it that way. Um so you don't have to probably probably participate in the gifts. But the thing about Christmas, I'm a Christian. I believe in Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior is to celebrate the birth of Jesus. And of course, we could get into the logistics like, oh, we don't know the specific day, but they know it was around that time. So that's why I celebrate Christmas. I didn't get any gifts. I, I don't. That's not the whole thing of Christmas. But yeah. But I get it. Yeah. But I feel like if you have it and it's a time to just show people you love and give gra gifts of gratitude, then hey. Yeah, not focus on the gifts. Yeah, like, it's just a time to... Like, it's some things that you just can't escape. Like, I don't want to say escape, but it's just like... You could not value something, right? But why deprive that? For, like, say, for instance, you have kids. You don't really care for Christmas, but would you deprive your kids of that? That don't even have... Like, so it's just like... It, it, it's not going to hurt you. If you don't want to buy the gifts, just say that. <laughs> and the gifts don't have to be expensive. But today, we're going to talk about glowing up. So I was just recently watching a video, watching a podcast episode. Not a pagan. <laughs> yeah, I don't really care for those things. Like, yeah. it's not, Christmas is a pagan holiday. Well, Daniela, you can feel that way. Um, I just, for me, Christmas is celebrating Jesus' birthday. It's not all about, you know, I don't know. But if you got have that personal conviction, I then you follow what the Holy Spirit is telling you. But I didn't get that conviction, so you know we can get there in the logistics. Do I feel like if we, if you're not gonna go if if you're not gonna go to hell for something, like don't do the most. That's my whole thing with it. Now on to the topic, right, Morgan? <laughs> Period. Hey, cuz, how are you? I I need food, so my energy is not all the way there. Jesus is the reason for the season, right? Italian princess. I don't know why um, TikTok erased. But let's get into the topic. So, I was watching this video, and it was so on key. Because at the beginning of this year, or was the end of last year, 2022, God gave me this word. And he was like, um, I'm pruning you. I think it was the beginning of this year. I'm pruning you. And I'm like... I had to go look up what pruning means. And it's very important when, even when you're reading the word or anything, is to look up words. Look up words that you don't remember or you don't understand or you think you know the definition, but you really don't. It is not really making sense in the context that you're reading it. It's important for you to look it up because it has a deeper meaning. So we can look at in the book of Matthews when Jesus is talking about, uh, well, it's not just the book of Matthews. I think it's John. I wrote my, I wrote my notes, so let me look. Let me look at my notes. Maybe Hebrew 12. No, Matthew 9, 17. No, that's not it. Let's go to Hebrews 12. 
you know, I'm going to always bring Bible into this because you can't fully grow up and, unless you know God. And that's that's just my whole thing. Like, and I don't want to do anything outside of God because you'll see how quickly what you think you gain will quickly fall away. That's why you see people who are living a certain lifestyle. They look like they have everything but on the inside. They are broken. They don't know themselves fully and uh, they are depressed. They're not really truly happy. All they have is materialistic things. So I'm going to go to Hebrews. Well, see, that's why I should have brought my regular Bible. Like, I really don't like these. Um, oh, jeez. Okay, 12. 12 one. This is not it. It is Matthews. I know what I'm talking about. I wrote the wrong... My notes are all out of whack. Yes, prune reduce the extent of something or by removing... Well, okay, let's look at the other... Because I wrote it down on my board at home. Hold on. Or maybe it's in my phone. Let me look it up. Because you know how most... Like, don't just go with the first definition... We're going to go with the verb. Hold on. If it's... Um, and so now you have to... Hold on. Okay, so... Pruning. To trim by cutting away dead or overgrown branches or stems, especially to increase fruitfulness and growth. So you do, like... So it says to trim by cutting away dead or over or overgrown branches or stems, especially to increase fruitfulness and growth. You cannot hi Congo. You cannot grow until those branches are cut off. Until your old ways, your mind, the old way of thinking, um, the old way of perceiving, the the way you think about yourself, the way you love yourself. Until that changes, nothing in your life will grow. No, you won't. You will repeat the same cycle over and over. Your 2024 will look just like your 2023 and your 2022 if you do not change these things about you. Hi, Gabby. So let's talk about pruning. Let me go to my notes. I'm not gonna. I'm really just flowing because y'all now I'm feeling hungry. The more I talk, <laughs> Lord, let me just pray. Father God, give me strength. Lord Jesus, and let me be filled with the Holy Spirit to speak to your children, oh God. Father God, I just pray that you fill me up. Use me as your mouthpiece, oh God, to edify them, oh God. Wherever they're going through, Lord Jesus, I pray that you give them peace. Peace that surpasses all understanding, oh God. And if they're in lack, oh God, that you bring forth provision, oh God. I pray that you uplift their spirits right now. Whoever is experiencing heaviness, whoever is experiencing sadness, depression, I pray that that weight be lifted off of them, oh God. In Jesus' mighty name name i pray amen okay because we just gotta <laughs> thank you sammy <laughs> thank you sammy oh so no he just so my prayer was um so one thing about god <laughs> i don't know how you talk to y'all but way that god talks to me is so funny because i feel like why are you i don't know whatever but i was basically in my prayer closet and i was like well um my question that I asked him had nothing to do with that. I was like, well, why is all this happening? Why am I losing this person? To tell me what, what do you want? Like, what is happening? I told, because I was losing, like, people from my life. Like, relationships were not the same or whatnot. And that's what I asked him. So, I, and that's the thing. So, learning to sit still. So, I sat. Well, I laid down. I was like, oh, yeah, I'm waiting for him to hear me. And I try not to think about anything because your mind has to be clear. And all I heard was, I'm pruning you. And that was it. I asked you a specific question about certain people and I'm pruning you. I was like, oh, should I go back and talk to the I'm pruning you. So God don't really have to give, like, what he said is what he said. Like, it was very clear, I'm pruning you. So if I was praying about, oh, losing certain things and certain people, I didn't know what, like, in that season, I just felt like um, God was just taking away so much. And he res he responded back, I'm pruning you. And what does pruning mean? Cutting away, cutting away dead or overgrown branches or, st or stems, especially to increase fruitfulness and growth. Sometimes you're not going to know 
why you're losing certain things in your life, why you're going through certain seasons, but it's going to all work together for your good. The reason why it's going to all work together for your good, because it's a part of your pruning season. Those things have to be cut away from you. And you think, oh, they're good. And that's why I just wrote, I just um, posted this video. I said, your standards, if your standards are not God's standards, you'll quickly think that what you have is the best and God says, I have better. So if you think that this thing that you're holding is the best, you think that this is the best bottle of water, you're not going to want to try another bottle of water. You're going to stick with this. But what God will have, what happen, probably have you lose the bottle or like, you know, make you the taste for this specific water dry up in order for you to try something else because he has better for you. That's the thing. Like you're never going to want to let go what you think is the best for you because your standards is not where God is. Your standards is right here and God's standards is way up here. But you think what you have is the best and the best that you can do. And God's trying to give you greater. So in order for him to give you greater, he has to change your mindset to think like and want more and that openness. So, yes, he has to start pruning you. What you're used to, that old mindset, that old way of thinking, the places that you, you're so comfortable in going, he has to make you uncomfortable. And if he has to shake your life up, if he has to have people start to switch up on you, that's what he has to do. If I'm talking good, I need some hearts on the screen. I need to know that y'all are listening. I need y'all to share this live because we're going to get into some things. We're not going into 2024 the same. And it doesn't matter that your life, like I'm not saying that your life will change overnight. But once your mindset changes, your life will begin to change. Once you start realizing that you are worthy, the first thing is gratitude. I don't care where you are in life right now. I don't care if you, you, you don't have no money, you're down on your luck. Like, I don't care. The fact that you have breath in your body, you open your eyes today. Ex, ex, tell, the quickest way the enemy likes to work, which I can't stand, is to attack your identity and make you feel worthless because you are not where you want to be in life. So you start to doubt yourself and it puts you in a place of depression where you don't even have the, the strength to get up and try again. So that's why it's so important for you to practice gratitude and be grateful and say how thankful you are to just wake up. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. To just say thank you. I got, you woke up another day. It's, listen, it's going to happen for you. I'm telling you. The fact that you're on this live, it is going to happen for you. I was not going to come on live today. I ain't eat all day. Listen, the fact that you're on is going to happen for you. And I need you to come into agreement with what I'm saying. I need you to, I need you to believe it that it's true. And no matter what tries to come against you in this season, in 2024, I want you to promise me and promise yourself that you're not going to give up. Some, sometimes it's going to look like it's hard because God is taking you through a pruning season. If you realize that your certain things are coming off of you, listen, God is teaching you something. Learn the lesson. You don't know what's on the other side of that. But right now, you have to go through it. But practicing gratitude because we can't allow the enemy to filtrate your mind and make you think that you're less than, that you're not worthy of greater because greater is on the way. And you have to claim these things as if it's so. Before it even happens in your life to know that you're going, you're on your journey. Dude, we're not letting the enemy play with our mind because I, I'm, I'm not playing with the enemy. I get so upset when when people tell me like, I don't feel like this. I don't because the enemy almost had me in that way. And I'm not going, to, not on my watch. We're not going for that in 2024. Starting today. What you, that, 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 listen, start to write down. I want everybody to write down. How do you feel about yourself? What? Because it really don't matter what people say about you. When you are comfortable in your own skin and you are confident in who you are, it doesn't really matter what people say about you. You're not going to allow people to put you in a box. Your standards are not God's standards. Their standards is not God's standards. You got to go. We got to come up. So I want everybody to write down, like, well, how do you perceive yourself? Good and bad. But I want you to write a line down the paper and I want you to really take a look at how much good things you have to say about yourself and how much negative things you have to say about, about yourself. And the negative things that you have to say about yourself, that's what we have to pray about. Because that those negative things that you that you see about yourself, that's how the enemy plays with you. Because what you believe, your belief system about yourself, that's what we have to tackle. Because it's not God's standard for you. You're made in his image. So how you think about yourself is not how God sees you. That's what we have to attack. That's what we have to pray. Because we need to look at ourselves and see ourselves as God sees us. Because once we once we know our identity, the, the, 
The enemy always attacks our identity and how we feel about ourselves, how we perceive ourselves. Because if you are confused in who you are, you will never get to your destination. You will never reach purpose because you don't know where you're going. You're unsure. You do not trust yourself. And you listen to wherever everybody else tell you to go. Because you do not know who you are and whose you are. And there are some people that believe in God, but they believe in God for somebody else more than they believe in God for themselves. That they, they, they see and watch God bless other people, but they feel like that same God won't bless them. How so? It's because the perception, they don't feel worthy of it. They feel like, oh, I did so much in life that God would never bless me. Or maybe I have a curse on my life. Or maybe I'm just not good enough. Who told you that? Because God did not tell you that. The same way he blessed your neighbor, he wants to bless you just as much. Who told you that lie? God wants so much for you. But you have to know that you are worthy of it. Because the moment you feel like you're not worthy of it, when God has it in front of your face, you won't be op- your arms won't be open to receive it. Because you feel like, oh, that's not for me. That's too good. I'm not worthy of that. It's too good. I, I, it's not for me to take. That job that's offering you six figures, no, I'm not qualified. I won't even apply for it. But even though I feel this unction in my spirit to apply for a job that I am not qualified for, I won't even do it because I feel like I'm not worthy. And they're going to have, they're going to soon find out who I am because I feel like an imposter if I'm there. But I meet all the qualification because God gave it to me. God gives me wisdom to do the job. God gives me favor to do the job. But if I don't believe in myself enough or I don't feel like I'm worthy, I would never go apply to that very thing that God is going to put on somebody else's heart to bless me with. Oh, I'm not, I don't feel, I want to be married, but I don't feel like love is going to ever happen to me because the guys that I met or the woman that I met always play with me. I always end up leaving these relationships broken. So I built this wall up and I feel like I'm never going to be worthy. And I, I just, and building those wall up, you only, the people, when you build those wall up, right? The people that you 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 continue to attract is the same people that that cause you to build those walls up, because you didn't do the work. You didn't do the work. God wants us to be in a place to love freely. I want everybody to be in a place to love freely, no matter how much times you've been hurt. Love can happen for you again, and it's their loss. If if, if they choose to play themselves and play with you, their loss. Dust off your feet and keep it going. And yes, your feelings may be hurt, right? But knowing that it don't cost you nothing to give love, it, it, it does not. But when we become so dependent on somebody filling a void in us, that's the thing about it. That's what keeps us, that's what, that's what breaks us the most, especially when we have sex outside of marriage. Let me just say that. But when we try to make somebody else, a, another human being who is flawed, try to fill that void that only God can fill. So we are left disappointed because anything that you put before God, God will quickly show you why you should never put anything before him. It's and okay. Another thing before, before we go into 2024, I want all of us to focus on idols. Like what are, what is an idol in our life? Our phone can be an idol in our life. Anything that you're not willing to put down for God is an idol in your life. Anything that you put before God is an idol in your life. You want to be on Instagram, you want to be on TikTok more than you want to be in your word. When you have the free time, instead of getting in your word, because you're so busy, you really don't have time. But the, the moment you do have free time, instead of being in God's presence, you pick up your phone. It, be, it slowly becomes an idol. It slowly becomes a distraction. The more you are distracted, the more you won't get to your, to see purpose. Miss Lee, and you save yourself a marriage. And that's the thing. So it, it goes back to what I said. Your standard has to be God's standard. Because once your standards are God's standards, listen, you will no longer settle. You will no longer feel bad about your decisions because it's God's standard for you. Um, Kaylee says, would it be rude for me to cut him off? So, it, so I'm going to address, I'm not even going to address the decision because I want everybody to know how to make these wise decisions because... We don't even know each other personally. What I'm going to read what you just said. Because your standard is, I'm saving myself for marriage. I'm, I'm speaking as if I'm you. I'm saving myself for marriage. But I met this guy. Um, he doesn't want to re- be in a relationship with me. But he wants to have sex with me. But I want to wait for marriage. That's my value. That's my moral. Anybody that goes against your morals and your values is not somebody for you. It should be, it should be 
Um, it should be very, you should be very quick to let go and remove anybody in your life that goes against your morals and your values. Cause you know, that person is never going to respect you and that person is never going to respect your boundaries and that person is not for you. So that's, so we have to be sure of ourselves. What, what I want you to, um, think about Kay is this, why am I afraid? Of letting go why am i conflicted in my decision of letting go when i know i have these values that he's not willing to meet he's not men know what they want let me just tell y'all this i was raised around raised around nothing but boys i'm the only girl in my household men know what they want and men are very territorial if he wanted you it'll be he would want to be in a relationship with you you waiting for marriage and nonetheless he doesn't even want to put a title on you that should come on you are a daughter of a king you are far more worthy than that. Don't let, do not settle. Do not let nobody play with you. Cause that's somebody that's going to play with you. Trust me when I say that men know what they want. And if he doesn't want a relationship, the more you stay and entertain him, the more he knows he got you. And the more he'll just start to feed you sweet things, everything you want to hear and emotional bonds. When you create that emotional bond, it's harder for you to leave because that emotional bond, he know he, he got you. Men will play up on the wrong man. Because I don't want y'all to think all men are the same. All men are not the same, honey. No, there's some good men out there. And there's a man for you. There's a woman. And for the guys that are on here, there is a good woman for you. Not all men are the same. But you will have, when you are unsure of yourself, you, you will attract those men. Because kindred-like spirits know each other. But I want you to know this. Stand firm on what you believe. Your standard has to be God's standard. The moment you are willing to compromise your God's standard. That's why, it, you know, how we, we see this, all this stuff on social media like, oh, um, um, about the cheesecake thing. That's the world standard. We talking about God's standard, your, moral, your morals. If you really like God, you, you don't care what he take you. We're vibing. It's the connection. But you know what it is? Everybody's so quick on putting these walls up and they're so afraid to get played. So they always want to feel like they're leaving something, leaving with something out of the relationship. At least he spent $200 on me on a date, but you still got played. You still left broken because you're so focused on getting something without really knowing the person and seeing those red flags. If they're even willing to if they even deserve your time. Not everybody deserves your time. I want y'all to be very choosy in what y'all give y'all time to. And I, I'm not just talking about relationships. I'm talking about everything. Be very choosy in what you give your time to. Your time is so valuable. We cannot afford to miss God's mark. You do not want your life to look the same at the end of 2024. If you are if you are wanting to see something new, I'm talking about what God wants for you. Because what God wants for you is always better than your best. If you really want to tap into into who, who God has called you to be, I promise you, all it takes for you to shift your mindset and to know that you are worthy of more and more is on the way. But you got to tap in. You got to tap in. You got to tap in. You got to be willing to lose a, a couple of things because the pruning season is all about taking away old branches. And sometimes you don't know. You don't know what's weighing you down. It's, it's okay. But when God starts to take those things out of your life, you might cry about it. We're human. We're human. So when God's, you, cause you're not going to understand why God, why I got to lose? Why I got to lose so much? Why does it feel like I'm losing so much? God is taking you, taking those things apart away from you. God is breaking those things, throwing it into a fire because he cannot use those parts of you. So he's throwing them into the fire because he has no use of it. If God can't use certain things in your life and can't use you, or if it is caught or is it causing stagnation in your life where he cannot use you, he has to cut it off. You may think of it as a loss, but God is in the end. When it comes full circle, it's going to bless your life. Okay, so I missed a couple of... Let me go back. Am I talking good? Am I talking good? Am I talking to you? He, he, Hey, friend, why do I feel like God ignoring me when I cry about my dating life? He not ignoring you, KD. He not ignoring you. He not. You remember what I said about the either thing. So for the single woman who desire marriage, it's okay for you to... For the single woman and men, because I do have some men on here, that are desiring marriage, you desire it. But do not ever desire it more than you desire your relationship with God, more than you desire your relationship with yourself. Because that emptiness that you think that person is going to come in and fill, you're putting them too much on a high pedestal. Focus on your relationship with God or change your prayers. Trust me, God is going to speak to you. Start asking God, uh, what is in me that you want to change or transform before I, be before I become a wife? Or not, no, before I become married. 
or prepare me. That's another thing. I pray that. Prepare me. And I just start certain. He changed my desires. Ask God to prepare you for marriage. Prepare you to be with that kingdom spouse that he has for you. God, Vanessa, God is exposing your platform for his glory. I'm watching it. Oh, my gosh. Thank you, Gabby. Thank you, Gabby. Thank you, Gabby. And, you know, um, so when let me tell y'all this. Another thing. When God is, um, so when, when God starts blessing you, right, you might not see, um, you'll see the fruits within yourself first before you see it, like the things that you'll, you'll gain outwardly, like the materialistic thing, like the money. God has to put those fruits on the inside of you because it's already on the inside of you. Like it's literally on the inside of you. Whatever, it, whatever you need to win in this season is already on the inside of you, but God has to prune those, those dead branches off those dead things in your life, those things that's weighing you down for those fruits to be cultivated. When those fruits are cultivated, right? A part of you may start to feel like, am I really going to do this? Am I really called to this? You are. You are. And it's okay to feel that way. We're all human because we're thinking like, it's not by our own might. That's why you feel that way. You feel like it is because it's not only you doing it. It's the Holy Spirit that's helping you. So you feel like, oh, well, I don't know. You're right. You can't do it. That's why you need God to do it. So it's okay for you to feel that way because you cannot do this alone. He has to prune you. The pruning season is not easy. You may have to cry your way through it, but it has to be done. Do not be afraid of the pruning season because the glory that comes after it. Why was Christmas triggering? Oh, because of um, your lonely season. For the women who are lonely, when you experience lonely, loneliness, I want you... Well, it goes back to the assignment I said before. I want y'all to write down how you feel about yourself. What is your perception of yourself? Because I'll, I'll be, I want to really know what is on the negative side of that. So take a sheet of paper, uh, draw a line. I wish I had something here. I'm at my mom's house. Haitians, you know. Um, draw a line. and I'm looking for a paper and a pen. Draw a line in the middle of the paper, down the middle of the paper. And I want you to write down on one side. Like the good things you have to say about yourself, how your beliefs about yourself. And on the other side, I want you to talk about the negative things, what you're insecure about, what you're fearful about. What are you afraid of? What are you afraid of? Am I never going to be married? Am I never going to find that person? If you feel that way, I want you to write that down. I want you to, and then I want you to analyze how much negative things you belief system that you have adopted and where did it come from? Because it did not come from God. Because that's not what his word says. Dominique, 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 Dominique. Um, being, if you feel like that, I want you to know for a hundred percent because God does honor covenant. And if, but if you feel, if you know for sure that God is telling you that it's okay for you to do that, your disobedience is going to cost you way more. Um, I saw this lady, she had got divorced and literally in less than a year, God remarried her with somebody else that took her with her four kids because a lot of people may may want you to think that it will never <laughs> Elder, you should come on a lot of people may want you to think like um you're not worthy that's why you can't you can't your perception of yourself cannot be based off of what somebody else feels about you i want y'all to all be confident in who y'all are thank you cash dior matthew 6 i want y'all all to be confident in who you are you have to you can't be moved by what people say about you. What they say about you has to ricochet off of you. Like, ugh, that's not my identity. I know who I am. I know who I belong to. I know what the word says about me. I know what my father says about me because I spend time with him. That he already gave me revelation of who I am. Before I was um, in my mother's womb, he knew me. He already called me to do great things in this world. And I don't care what tried to come against me because things are going to try to come against me. But the fact that I have breath in my body, I'm still here today to know that God is still going to make way for me. That I am going to end up on the other side of this thing that I'm currently going through. That nothing is going to hold me back. That I'm going to make it through. I don't care what tries to come against me. I'm believing in God's word for my life. You got to speak to that thing. You got to speak to that thing because when I tell you the enemy is going to try to attack your mind when you are on the verge of breakthrough. And that and that's the thing. We got to guard our minds because even what I'm thank you, Father God. Thank you, Jesus. I feel like somebody is breaking free right now. Somebody is breaking free right now. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm telling you. 
if you if your standard is God's standards and how you feel about yourself, you just got to break free from the, the lies that you have told yourself for so long. The lies that you allowed the enemy to feed you about yourself. I want you to believe who God has called you to be. I don't want you to believe in the lie of the enemy no more. You have to dust it off. Quickly, you have to proclaim these things over your life. You have to know. That's why you got to know the word. That's why you have to be in God's presence. Because when the world is against you, when those people in your life are telling you something that's contrary to the word of God, you know who you are. You're going to stand firm in who you are and who God has called you to be. That you're not going to be conflicted. That you're not going to be moved from here and there. Listen, you're going to be like a tree that is planted. Solid ground. What is your foundation? What is your foundation? That's why before you meet that that person, that's why a I, I, single woman, and I know as we get older, the the especially if we don't have kids and you you desire children like myself, and the world will tell you you're running out of time. I don't want you to think about that because then you start to worry and you start to feel like, well, oh, I gotta I gotta put myself out here. I gotta do this. I gotta do that. I gotta be on these dating apps. I gotta do this uh, because I'm running out of time and um, I want to have kids. Listen, listen. You're distracted because what God wants to do in you, quickly that person will come. Listen, you don't know how quick that God wants to give you to that person, but there's certain things on the inside of you that he has to develop. There's certain things in, uh, inside of you that he has to prune off because you may think you're ready, but when you're in relationship with somebody, right? That person just says something to you that might trigger you from your last relationship, from that last man that played you, from that last girl that played you. Right? That last person that made you feel worthless and you worked so hard in healing yourself and you think you healed, but until you get in a relationship where that person does something to you one day and says something that will trigger you, how will you re react? Will you be quickly to bounce? This is a marriage. This is a, you, you set those vows on, that's a covenant under God. Will you be quickly to go? Will you be quickly to talk back? There's certain things that God, you just don't understand what God wants to do in you. I don't want nobody to move out of desperation because when you move out of desperation, I'm not even just talking about relationships with anything. When you move out of desperation, the enemy, the enemy is the only person that's going to bless you. And what, what, what does the enemy, what is the whole thing with the enemy? He comes to kill, steal, and destroy. He's going to see you that person that looks like what you want. With everything that you want, that outward appearance, he's going to look like that, but he's not going to have the fruits. He's going to bless you with a job, but that ain't the job for you. He's going to bless you with your so-called business, but it's never going to reach the heights where God wants you to be in the business because you, you moved before time. Where you feel like you're failing. Why am I failing, God? I thought you called me to this. I've been praying about it, but you moved before time. It was certain things I wanted to equip on the inside of you. It's some, somebody I wanted to connect you with before you actually went and opened the business. That you did not even consult me when it came to the business. You did not even pray. Come on. You didn't even ask me, what do I think about this, this vendor before I even went with this vendor? Because I probably, God probably had somebody else that's way cheaper with better quality that will work with your budget. Concern God with everything concerning your life. In this season, we're not allowing the enemy to play with our minds. We're going to believe what God says about us. We're going to believe that we are worthy of the good things, the blessings that's going to overflow in our lives. I speak overflow over everybody's life. And before God, before the, the, the material overflows, like the money, the house, the cars, the things that we like to pray about, the fruits are going to be there. That in your situation, in your hard times, that listen... Nobody don't even know your problems because the way you carry it, the way you, you carry yourself to know that it's not what's on me, it's what's in me. I, be, I could be going through the worst season of my life, but the way I carry myself, my posture, my heart posture, the way I even still treat people after being betrayed. I got to exemplify Christ. My standards has to be like Christ. My standard has to be God's standards. Hey, Kay. Come on now. We're going to get there. So I want everyone to write, to comment. I want everyone to comment one thing that you want God to do for you. One thing that you're believing God for. I don't care if you think in the next five years, I'm going to be a millionaire. I want you to write it. I want you to write it down and believe that it's never going to be too late. Do not allow anybody to tell you that it's too late for you. It's never too late. You know why it's not too late? Because as long as you have breath in your body, it's never too late. 
marriage. Yes, marriage, healing, continue working on my faith, restoration, emotional stability, millionaire. Let me be financially successful with peace. God blessing me with a new job. What he wants for me, restore me, peace and prosperity, a new home. I want to be very rich and healed. Um, okay, we're going to address that. Uh, I want you to change it. Wealthy, wealthy mindset. I want to, I want God to heal me and put me in position for financial freedom, healing from cancer. I speak healing and I pray that God was that, that what you're going through does not rob you of the day that your days to know that I speak healing over your body right now. Supernatural healing, supernatural healing by his stripes that you may be healed. That God, God, I pray that you do it for my sister, Danielle. Danielle, or is it Daniel? I'm sorry. Oh my gosh, just went away so fast. How was your process in having faith while doing content creation? I just, um, I think changing, I think implementing God, like what I'm passionate about, like is not just about content creation. It's just like, I want, um, I want people to get the message. So I'm not, well, let me not say this. I don't want to say I'm not a pastor, but I'm not a pastor of a church. So this is the platform that God has blessed me with. I know I have a power of influence. How am I going to use my influence? To tell you how to buy something? Yeah, I can tell you how to buy something. But I want to, I'd rather change lives that way. So I'm not looking at it as just something to do that's cute. But I'm, I want my message, my message to change someone's mindset, to change someone's life, to give somebody hope, to, you know, to renew their spirit. That's how I use my content creation and keeping faith. Like I feel joy because it's my passion and I feel like it's a part of it's, it's my purpose. So even when I don't have a good day, I feel the need to get up and post and to say a message because it's not only encouraging y'all, but it's encouraging me. So, and I know how, how powerful the, my words are. So I have to get up and speak. Even when I want to like, no, I'm not, I'm not feeling my best or I, I don't have it all together. No, nah, that's the quickest way the enemy wants you to think about yourself. That's why I said, it's not what's on you, it's what's in you. No matter what your circumstances are, no matter what, like where you are in life right now, what's on the inside of you has to be given birth to. It has to come out because that's how you're going to get everything else. If you hold up the gifts that God has put on the inside of you, you're never going to see those things that he wants for you. That home, that wealth, that you're never going to see those things. You have to birth it out in your dry season. When things don't look like it's put together, God will still have need of you because that's how he gets the glory. That's how God gets the glory. When you're in your low season, when it looks like you're not winning, you're still prophesying those things. You're still speaking life when everything around you looks dead. That's moving by faith. When when Jesus said, um, surely all you need is a, a faith as small as a mustard seed. I don't know if y'all ever seen a mustard seed. I actually put the mustard seeds on my prayer board. The It's like so small. He said, you can speak to this mountain and say, go and it will go. Move and it will move. And Jesus did not say, tell me, have faith in, uh, tell me to, to tell the mountain to move. He said, you. He said us. He said, as long as you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to the mountain, move, and it will move. You. So, yes, they, God wants us to believe in ourselves like that. Like, because we are, if we are made in his image, why would we doubt ourselves? That our father is the creative, creator of all things on this earth. Good things. How was it? Okay, let me see. Financial freedom, my career and mindset that I can have a life I want and a relationship with him. Yes, XO. Denver. That's an Islamic quote with the mustard seed. Love it. Uh, well, I'm Christian. I, I think they may, they may have similarities. Um, now I owe you a phone. <laughs> Listen, we are declaring kingdom spouse. Yes, God's daughter, kingdom spouse. Proverbs 31 woman. And I want y'all to just have a posture. I want y'all ladies to be soft. You know when they talk about soft life, I know y'all tired of the soft life thing. But let me tell y'all, let me help change our perspective when it comes to that. These, let's talk about biblical. God don't want us ladies to be hard. 
Because then when you're hard, you can't be that natural nurturer. You're not going to, you're going to attract a man that's going to manhandle you. No, you want to be soft. That don't mean you, you like somebody going to play with you. I want y'all to be soft. The reason why you're hard is because you're still holding on to past trauma. You're still holding on to past hurt. So to me, soft life is really be moving healed. Really, you can't be hard and in the presence of God. I, I became so soft because I literally I was so hard. I still want to become softer. Like I want to be, I want to be treated like a flower. I, I want somebody to be gentle with me. Because I feel like God is God is gentle with me. I'm his daughter. He loves me. When you think about how much God loves you, why would you want to stay in that place of, of, of hardness? When you get into the presence of God, you it, it just starts to break off those layers. That's what's so beautiful about it. Hey, Tish. That's what's so beautiful about it. Thank you, God. Mm, thank you. Like, literally, you could probably feel God, like, hugging you. Like, seriously. I just, I want y'all to know that you are so loved by God. You're so loved by God. Like, listen. And if you're going through, like, a hard time right now, I don't want you to feel like you're less than. Girl, you on your way. You on your way. That's what I'm telling you. Like, when those storms come, just know. There's a rainbow at the end of the storm. So, that's how you know your breakthrough is coming. But you just got to get through it. You cannot give up. We're not going to no longer start and not finish. That's what we're canceling in 2024. What you start. So be mindful of what you start. Because if you wrote it down, you don't went into prayer about it, you don't fasted about it, you better finish. You better finish. You better finish. Because we're no longer starting and not finishing. And we and we we're gonna denounce every generational curse, every generational cycle be broken off of us. No longer will we put up the, with the things that our ancestors, our our grandparents, our mother and our father, what what they couldn't break free out of, what entrapped them from getting to where God needed them to be. That they had so much potential, but they died with potential. No longer would that be our destiny. That we're no longer gonna die with potential, but we're. Everything that God put on the inside of us that is going to be birthed out, that we're going to leave this life empty, empty, empty. We're going to allow God to use us in his fullness, in our fullness. Like, come on, we're not, listen, do you know, look back at your family, family lineage, the people that you did know, that they had gifts, they had talents that they died with. They died with those things. Do you know how sad God, that made God? That I wanted to use you mightily. But you allow the things that you went through in, the, in your life to make you think that you're not worthy. To make you question your identity. To make you not want to pursue those things because you didn't believe in me enough and you didn't believe in yourself enough. Or you wanted to be lazy. I rebuke laziness. Laziness. We're no longer going to be lazy, but we're going to actually give it our all. We're going to actually work hard at it. Hard at it. We're going to work smart. Because one thing about God, one thing about God, y'all, sweatless victories. Because it's a part of your, it, it, I'm not saying it's not going to be long nights or anything, but listen, when it's a part of your purpose, a part of your passion, it's going to fuel you. It's going to, it's going to, it's going to fulfill a certain part of your life that you, it, it ain't even going to feel like you're working hard. Because it's going to be so meaningful to you. Yes. How do, yeah, rebuke laziness. Because it's, re, listen, before 2023 get here, I mean 2024 get here, let's all read the book of Proverbs. Let's go into that. That's the book of wisdom. Listen, you can never not read it and not get a new revelation and learn something new. Or not even check you. Like, ooh, that was for me. Listen, it's for you. I want y'all to believe that. Because it all starts in your mind. Hi, sis. It all starts in your mind. Listen, you got to believe in yourself. You cannot no longer believe the lies that the enemy has fed you. We got to rebuke those things and we have to say what we're believing God for. What are you believing God for? And I don't want you to think low. You remember, we, I said God's standards, not our own standards, because what you think is the best, God has better. What you think is the best or the best as it's going to get, God has better. That's why you have to pray about everything, every decision that you're going to make, everything that you're going to allow into your life. You have to put God into it. You have to consult with God. He's your consultant. Yeah. He knows what's best for you. 
He knows what's best for you because quickly we'll settle for what we think is the best that we're ever going to do. And God has so much more. God has so much more for you. But it all starts with what are you believing? What do you believe about yourself? What do you believe that you're only capable of? Where where do you notice in your life that you continue to repeat the same cycles that you self-sabotage? When you're about to reach a breakthrough that something always pulls you back. That you never, like you, you feel it. You feel it with every being in your body that is coming. But then you never, you never grab it. Like it's, it's like it's running away from you. What is it? You have to reflect back on your life and and kind of identify what is that and sometimes it shows up in your family member's life that's how you 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 can quickly identify generational curses and cycles because what 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 your mother and your father struggled with or maybe it skipped that generation or what your grandparents struggled with what they didn't have the due diligence didn't do the due diligence to break and they died with that thing look at the cycle that continued in their life what what were their struggles? If drinking is a struggle for you, can if you come from a family of alcoholics, you cannot drink. That's the e you that's the easiest bait to fall for. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Po poverty is a big one. But you have the power to break that because money is nothing for God to want to give to us. God wants us to live, all live an abundant life, an abundant life. Looking up the word abundant, you know, sometimes you got to, when you read in the Bible, you got to just look up the words. Even if you think you know what it means, it has a deeper meaning. Mm -hmm. I'm going to read like the second, de well, I think this is the third definition, but. It says plentifulness of the good things of life, prosperity, the quantity or amount of something. Okay, now we go back. A very large quantity of something. But I like the third one. It's plentifulness of the good things of life. Oh, I pray that you heal rapidly. Because I know that is, the flu is nothing to play with. So make sure you drink all your fluids, sis. I'll be praying for your health. Because it is definitely flu season. I was I already know how you feel. Like you can't even get up. That's the worst. Poverty mindset, everything. The women in my family have no man or friends. So you see how poverty, like, uh, what, who's that? T. How poverty not only uh, infiltrated, like, their monies, right? But it infiltrated every part of their life where nothing is fruitful. Everything is dead. Where they don't even have fruitful relationships. Because we all need friend, friends. I don't care. Stop believing that lie that you don't need friends. You need good friends. Good friends, it, it, that's wealth. Somebody that can stick closer to you than a brother, that is wealth. And you said none of them are, none of them have no man. God honors covenant. God wants us to be in a relationship. God wants us to be married. So... You see how that poverty mindset, but it's all in what you believe about about yourself. Because what you believe about yourself, um, it manifests like in your life, like what you choose to settle for, what you choose to accept. And you have to be very mindful of that. Um, I don't know if that young lady is still on here. I forgot her name, but she was talking about the guy who um, wanted didn't want a relationship with her, but wanted to do those relationship things or marriage things with her. And it's just like, the more you entertain something that's not for you, the more you, you go into that trap. You have to really be yes and no. No what's for you or yes is for you. You can't play with this thing because we, we can't think the flesh ain't weak. I'm just saying, we cannot think that the flesh is not weak. That you, especially if you desiring relationships, when the wrong person comes, if you notice or you pray, I always say, I, re I recommend, consult God when somebody enters your life. God, That's one prayer God answers speedily, quickly. Is this person for me? If they are not, remove them from my life. Okay, so let me add Elder. Okay. Um, how do I add? Elder, can you send a request? I pray that they're still there. Who? 
Yes, good friends are still there, girl. Uh-uh. Yes, good friends. But listen. Yes, rebuke laziness. With the friendship thing, start learning about yourself. Go get a hobby. That's another thing. Find new things to do. You're going to um, attract like-minded people, different kind of people, people that are on the same path as you, at the same walk. In this season, because this is for me too, I had to learn this. I don't want to be common. And what I mean by that, you hanging with people where you dim your light or you, you don't say certain things because you don't want to seem judgmental because you already learned some lessons that they're going through. And if you're the only person that's sharpening, you're going to become dull. If you're the only person that's pouring in, pouring in, you're going to dry, you're going to run dry. If you're the only person that got some sense, that's not willing to settle, that's willing to wait on God's best for you. And these other people are settling all around you. It's going to frustrate you. Don't be in relationships like that. Learning to walk away from people who are not fruitful. And not feeling bad about it. You got to put you first. That's for me too. No love lost. But in this season, you can't come with me. It's not that I say I'm... I, it's not that I think I'm better than you. But I'm, it's certain things that I know that I'm better than. I'm not better than you. But certain things I am better than. 100%. I ain't, I ain't, I'm not going to argue with that. Been there, done that. And I don't ever want to go back. And if your life makes me want to go back or makes me think about it or I get so frustrated why you still stuck and you don't know no better. I don't want to be around you because it's, it's not going to be a conducive relationship. We're not going to be able to grow with one another. You know why? Because it's going to be always me telling you, no, no, you know your worth. Don't settle for this. Don't settle for it. And you're going to start to resent me. Like, oh, she always thinks she know everything because you ain't willing to get out of mess. Don't go where it's coming. Heavy on discernment. Yes. Come on now. Chapter. Yes. T. Come, you're not coming into this new chapter. Okay, so how do I add Elder? Oh, guess. Girl. My mom's house is not aesthetically pleasing. Hear me? Yes. Y'all can't see me though, right? I can't see you. Okay, that's all right. Um, <laughs> I just wanted to chime in on what you said. Praise the Lord. Um, hey, 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 beautiful, be beautiful people, beautiful people. I am Elda, all right? And I want to bring the scripture I, that I am wonderfully and fearfully made, okay? You hear me? Y'all yeah. hear me, right? Put some hearts in the air if y'all hear Elda. Yes, they hear you. I came because let me tell you what you talking about and giving tips on the glow up is so necessary. It is so necessary right now because there's a lot of people I'm, I'm watching the live and I'm just like throwing my phone girl come get me because you owe me a phone praise the Lord. Right. And I'm just picking up the people that are not able to articulate the season that they are in. They know that there is a shift. They know that there is a change. They feel the metamorphosis. They feel like, you know, when a snake goes through their season where the where their skin is coming off this is what a lot of you guys are going through all right and what she's basically um articulating for you is that where you are at right now that you cannot stay in that place the reason i bring up that i am wonderfully and fearfully made remember when i sent out that newsletter a couple of months ago because when we look at the second part of the verse it says my soul knoweth your spirit and where you are at right now is not in alignment and your spirit man your soul is trying to push you to level up to the standard of god it's pushing you to level up because where you are at you are operating too low and when you are operating too low you are not able to walk into the things that you keep envisioning that you keep dreaming that you keep seeing because it's not able to identify you it's not able to locate you because you are functioning too low yes mm. so sis came on here 
and she's trying to help y'all because let me tell you 23 the year 23 2023 have exposed your weaknesses it have exposed your strength it have exposed the people that are really with you it has showed you so much it's like 2023 was the year of exposure and as we're getting ready to go into 2024 it's going to be the year of establishment Yes. So I just want to encourage y'all, if y'all don't hear my good sis with y'all good ear, okay? If y'all don't hear my sis with y'all good ear, please hear the spirit of the Lord for real. We have to level up. Yes. No, people cannot come, oh, okay? Lord. There are Jesus. certain people that cannot come. These monitoring spirits, they cannot oh, come, all right? These leeches, they cannot come. These witches cannot come. These wolves cannot come. God is exposing. Yes. But we have to, get, listen, we got to get up on our feelings. Yes, it hurt. Uh-huh. Yes, it hurt. But that's the pain that you needed. Yeah. You needed that hurt. You needed that betrayal. You needed that heartbreak, right? Because it pushed you. It's yeah. pushing you to level up. It's pushing you to know your worth. It's pushing you to know your value. That's what it's doing. So and listen, I'm and, and I'm just gonna help sis out right now. If that man I, and I'm not going to say sucker, praise the Lord. We're going we gonna to stay holy. All right. If that man is not lining up with what the word of God says about a man loving a woman, then baby, run. Yes. If I got to belittle myself. Mm -hmm. All right. If I got to, if I got to belittle myself to make you comfortable as a man, run. If I'm still in survival mode where I cannot be feminine, where I cannot be soft, run. Run. If it's not lining up, if it's not lining up with what God has showed you concerning your life, if it's not lining up with what you ask God for, run. Yes. Yes. And the but thing since is, as you continue to drop these tips, hmm. but listen, the reason why they don't want to run is because they think that's as good as it's going to get. That's why I, I say focus on the mind and your standards have to be God's standards is because you believe once you get that thing, once you get that man that it, it's, it's giving you bare minimum, you think this, at least I have a piece of a man, at least I, I have somebody because I was so tired of being lonely in your loneliness. What is God showing you? You listen, if you don't use your singleness to to allow God to build you up because there's some things that God wants to do in you while you're in your single season. It's not Listen, all about but as a married woman, as a married woman, okay? I'm married not once but twice. Praise the Lord, okay? Let me tell you something. Embrace your singleness, all right? Because you can still be with a man and still be alone. Yes. You can be with a man you can be married to a man and still be incomplete. You have to be sound in who you are. When I got married, well, because let me tell you, and I'm gonna be very, and I'm gonna be very quick, um, sis. Um, I didn't believe that I can, I, I would ever be a wife. All right, that was my mindset back in the day. That was BC. That was my BC days. And, and when I say that, I was still in God. I was still ministering and, and still didn't have the mindset that um, I would be a wife. My mindset was you get what you need, I get what I need, and we keep moving. All right? Mm -hmm. I had a mentality of a man. All right? And then fast forward, I get married. The only thing I ever said, I said, well, Lord, let him be a man of God. Let me tell you, he could be mature to the word of God, but immature outside of it. Yes. Oh, I just said something right there. Yes. Oh, I just yes. messed somebody yes. up right there. Yes. I, he was a man of God. He prayed, he fasted, he, 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 he worshiped, he read, but everything outside of that, what? What? I wish I could see my face. What? What I had to run. Uh-huh. I had to run. You got to get specific in what you're looking for because you, you your box could be hot. <laughs> yeah. All right. Once he satisfy you, 
Okay, but what happens when you need something a little deeper than that? So there's nothing wrong with getting specific in what you're looking for. What you need is partnership because anybody can soar with you when you hire. Anybody can help you spend your money and make money. But what about those hard times? Can you help me carry the way? Are you anointed to help me carry the way? Are you anointed to war with me? Are you anointed to fight with me? Are you anointed to pray me through? Are you anointed to carry me? Yes. Okay. Hmm. But in your singleness, embrace it. Know who you are. Yes. Do not look for a marriage to complete you. Because when you take the time, when you take the marriage away, when you take the children away, when you take the ministry away, who is Vanessa? Who is God's daughter? Who is Tree Vibes? Who is Shirley? Who are you without all these accolades? Yes. That's when you know you have come to terms to know who you are and whose you are. Elder, drop your um your handles, your Instagram and your TikTok and your website. Everything is I am Elder. Everything is I am Elder. And then my website is www.theoneelder.com. But when you take away all these accolades, who are you? So I encourage the single women, baby, live your life. Live your life. Take your time to heal. Before I got remarried, I was single for three years. I was going on my little dates by myself because I ain't got no, I'm a people's person. I'm going to talk to everybody. So it don't matter to me. (laughs) Yeah. I went out to eat by myself. I went to the movies by my, like, yeah. I just embraced Elder. I took the time to heal. And let me tell you something. When my, when me and my husband now, when we got back reacquainted, because we knew each other since we were eight, when we got back reacquainted, his approach to me was very different. And he even said it. He said, I can't come at you any kind of way. I can't handle you any kind of way because I took the time to heal. He knew that he embraced a woman that was healed. He knew that he embraced a woman that know her value, that know her worth. So he knew he couldn't come. He couldn't come any kind of way. He knew he had to come correct. Mm. He knew he had to come correct. So this is why I support Take the time. There's nothing wrong with being single because yes. as a married woman, like, listen, that's a, I'm like, dang, I should have did this when I was. Like, <laughs> like, that's the thing. I just wish I could. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Because let me tell you, when you get married, another level of submission. But praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Mm. Embrace your singleness. Take your time to heal. Take the take them layers off. But sever those soul ties, Tom, Dick, and Harry, whoever you have relations with. Yes. Soul ties don't only come through fornication. Let, yes. it, let me let y'all know that right now. Yes. It don't only come through fornication. You can have emotional soul ties. Yes. Did you know that? And it could be with friends. So take the time to heal. Right. Take the time to heal. Get around like-minded women and y'all just live. Because I'm going to tell you right now, let me tell you how it's going to be. You're going to find it when you're not looking for it. It will come to you when you stop looking for it. It will come to you when you start, live your life, start traveling, get sexy. You know, you know, praise the Lord. My whole stomach in my lap, but I'm still fine. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, somebody. Praise the Lord, somebody, but embrace your singleness. Okay. Do the things that you wanted to do. Get that bucket list out. Okay. Because when you get married, it's beautiful, but it's a whole different ball game. But that's my word to y'all. Listen, your soul knoweth. Okay. This is why you cannot settle where you at. This is why you cannot stay where you at. This is why the spirit of the Lord is pushing you. And I, and it's not by coincidence that, you know, our sis, our sis here, Vanessa done came on is giving us the glow up tips because, and I, and it's so funny, Vanessa, I was just, um, I was washing my face with the um the cleanser that I bought from you, right? Yes. From P3. Y'all, um, you know, click the link in the bio. You know what I'm saying? Go shop. You know, all your needs. Pretty primp and proper, right? P3. So I was washing my face and I started laughing. 
And I said, I'm so proud of my sister because I don't know if you remember that one time you picked me up so we can go work out and you picked me up in a Nissan. And I saw but well, my, my, my dog big step in in 2023. My dog, big step it. You remember? You remember the Nissan? I, I remember the Nissan. I had that car for 10, probably almost 11 years. And that car went through Listen. so much. They don't. Listen. Un but, uh, but you can talk about the glow up. You, you could talk about the glow up. Because experience experience is what qualified you to talk about the glow up i remember i'm about to jump off i said my piece i said, my piece. I said <laughs> i'm trying, trying to go eat my you want to jump off i'm so yeah dumb. i'm about to go eat my bacon bites praise the yeah. lord can i go eat my bacon bites <laughs> i'm so dope. oh my god why am i crying okay because the glow up is real Cause I'm just remember that Nissan. I remember. Woo. I said, I and, and, and y'all, the Nissan used to hum when she. I was like, but we riding though. Tell but before. we riding though. <laughs> the but we riding though. That Nissan we, used to be like four different colors. Like, oh my god! And when you're like, I went through so much, especially when I came, gave my life to Christ. I literally, I was not working. And was I was with a guy who was providing financially. I was going to school, but I kind of like flunked out of school because I just stopped going. Like when, when I was depressed, cause I was in a situation, I knew that person was not for me, but I wanted him. I'ma just be real. But I felt like, I felt so, I felt so lost. And I remember going to church. I, did, I was not a member, I was not raised in church. My friend would always go to this church, embassy. And I always liked how apostle preach. One day, Apostle wasn't preaching. I was so mad. I'm like, who's this lady? This guest pastor. The guest <laughs> pastor said to me, she was praying for people up front on, on the pulpit, and she pointed at me. She stopped praying for somebody just to point at me and say, God said you're coming. And, you know, I'm like, mm. you know, I didn't say, I'm like, what? I, I just started crying because I'm already depressed. I'm like, yes, yes, yeah, whatever, God coming. The next week, I got saved, and I got saved for real. And I was like, yeah, God, I'm a, mm -hmm. I want to devote my life to you. But then here, here it is. That soul tie was still there. Now I'm praying to God. Now I'm praying to God. God save, uh, save him too, so we could be together. Cause I know, like, I can't be with him. He not saved. Listen. Right. And then another thing, like, okay, now I broke free from that situation. But then the enemy would try to tempt you, cause I, I wasn't. I, I found a job. I was working at a burger place. I was like, okay, God, I need money. I know my friends worked at this burger place. I was getting paid two hundred dollars a week. That's the most I ever made. It was so there were checks that I got that were less than two hundred dollars. Two hundred dollars was the most I ever made at this job. Mm. I remember a day where I was going to church. It was either it was a Friday night prayer, and before it was like thirty minutes before going to church, a guy I used to date talk, um, called my phone, and I haven't heard from this person in months. And he happened to call me. I was like, uh, he was like, oh, I'm gonna um pull up on you. I'm like, um, no, I'm. My, he don't know my transition. I don't been safe for about four months. I haven't spoken to him. So he don't know that I'm going to church now. I'm doing this. So he only know the old Vanessa. So I'm like, no, I'm going, I'm, I'm going somewhere. <laughs> right. So it's like, no, I'm already outside your house. And I'm like, oh my God. So I go meet him and he riding his new Range Rover. Mind you, at that time, I only had like $12 in my account. My car was on E and I wasn't going to get paid until the following week. Um, So I had $12. I probably had probably just got paid and that's probably what's left over with the little bills I don't had. Um, he came and then I told him, Oh yeah, I work now. He was like, You work? I was like, Yeah, I work at a burger place. He was like, What? He pulled out twenty thousand dollars to give to me. Mind you, I said I only had twelve dollars in my account. Man, my gas tank was on E. He pulled out twenty thousand dollars in cash to give. He's like, Man, here, take it. I was like, No. He was like, You're not gonna take it for real? Twenty thousand dollars. I said, No, I ain't gonna take it. I left and I went to church and I said I know that you wouldn't give it to me that way, God. And mm. I and I I don't want I don't want money to ever be an idol in my life. I want to see what you can do for me. I yeah, don't want to put mind. anything before you. Cause I know if I would have took that money, I would have been right back. Cause I didn't want to work at the burger place. So all it would have been that would have opened the door for him to call me the next day and be like, oh, come ride with me. And I would have quit the job. 
But I was willing to suffer with God because I knew suffering with God is better than um, eating with the world. Ooh, that's a word. Yeah, so I was willing to go through it. I, it's like, <laughs> child. And I wasn't tempted. I don't know. That was, child. But in, in the, less than a month, that person was in the feds anyway. So look at that. <laughs> look at that. Look at but, that. But but that's God. But that's yes, God that's because God. and that but that opened the door and from the outside looking in because somebody said this is what I wanted to hear. How did you glow up? I don't know who said it, but I seen it when you were speaking. For some people that have glowed up that's genuine in heart and hear what I'm saying. And I don't say this because Vanessa's my girl. No, I, I, I speak facts. And one thing about, about you, V, you are humble. And it, sometimes it's a little difficult for, for people of her caliber to speak on the glow up without sounding prideful. Because you know, some people, I'm gonna put some people have a receiving issue right? They will take it as her being prideful when it's no, it's her testifying on where she was, what she went through to get to where she's at. But I give God the glory because once again, this, that opportunity, that gave God the opportunity to show how he can really be Jehovah Jireh in your life. And I believe that's what really broke like, the straw that broke the camel back because I'm telling you y'all, like, I will not forget you picked me up another time so that we can go to church and we was right. And, and Vanessa, I don't forget things. You know, me, we was right in front of family dollar. Mm -hmm. And you said, sis, I'm working on some things and I am not going to be in the same place. And you mm -hmm. said, give me two years. Mm -hmm. See, you don't even remember that. No, I don't. You don't even remember that. Right in front of Family Dollar. We was driving right past Family Dollar, getting ready to go to embassy. And you said, sis, I'm working on some stuff. Give me two years. Mm -hmm. And I watch you take off. I watch you take off. So I am so proud of you. I want you to keep telling your story. I want you to keep on glow. I feel Jesus. Hallelujah. I just want you to keep on elevating and keep, let God do what he need to do. Because when I see another, another level, another level. Yes. Another Thank level. You. Thank you. Another level. Continue to be obedient continue to be graceful continue to be beautiful you are you are truly an inspiration to me y'all i be all cut one two o'clock in the morning sis like completely forgetting yeah. what time it is i just be sis i need help right so may the lord continue to use you sis Thank and you. to all her viewers and those that are just watching because you so happen to be scrolling make sure y'all get connected with this woman of god thank you because she's a powerhouse Praise the Lord. I'm yes. gonna go eat my uh, bagel bites. Okay, right. bye. Love you. Enjoy your bagel. I love you too. I'll see you later. Well, later in the week. Okay. I'll be at church. How I exit out? Women, so I'm going. I I don't even know. Maybe the top button. I don't even know, sis. I got it. Okay. So I didn't work at Burger King. I see somebody say, "Are you still at BK?" It was Shake Shack. So it was a high paying burger place. It was not no cheap burger place. The burger is like $8. But yeah, I was working at Shake Shack. My um, friends were the managers there. And yeah, that's like one part of my testimony. I like to give that testimony because I know a lot of people like I'm from down South Florida. I'm from Pompano. So I feel like a lot of young girls get into that mind. Because like, look at the rappers now. City girls using men. Uh, like what is that girl named? The booty brown, I don't, I don't know that that sexy red. So like the the agenda that's being pushed, where money is the idol in that whole situation, where women are going outside of themselves, they don't even know their worth, but they're they're basing it off of material. Like, as long as I get money, so that becomes an idol. God is no longer the foundation of their life. They're slowly losing themselves. And when people talk about selling their souls, that's basically what that is. When you're worshiping anything other than God and you're giving yourself more to that thing, that's selling your soul. And that's why people end up doing drugs because they feel so empty. They need to be poured into and they're trying to find an outlet because they're so broken. 
So I like to give that example. That's one of my many examples because child was, I don't want to say broke, but I was going through financial difficulties for a very long time. And I felt like what is happening? But you know one thing about it? Listen, you got to pay attention. I used to start and not finish. I used to start and not give it my all. So it, it was God probably wanting to bless me a year into being saved. Oh, thank you for the person who just bought my ebook. If somebody said I need to write a book, I actually did write a book. It's called The Circle Detachment Technique. It's linked in my bio and it's right now it's $19.99. Original price is $37. It's not just an ebook, but it's also a worksheet. Like I put a workbook, like practical things. I feel like you could read everything, but then it's not going to register. I want you to act it out every single day. And I'm working on actually um, putting it into a physical form where I can put on Amazon. So look forward to that. I'm going to I'm gonna do my due diligence. I'm going to say this. And once I say it, my word is bond. I'm going to put that out before um, this year's out. So before this year closes out, I'm going to have that done. And I'm going to add some pages into it as well. Um, some prayer points and stuff like that, because I've been learning and um, reading about generational curses and um, how to break free from that. Because sometimes you feel like no matter what you do, something is holding you back. So um, putting into those prayers into my ebook, and I want to implement some more self care tips and how to really love yourself and believe in yourself and really know who you are and who God has called you to be. Do you have Bible studies? Everybody asks me that. I definitely have to pray about it because I don't want to take on anything that's not meant to be. Um, so I don't have Bible studies. I don't. If God wants me to do that, I will pray about it. I will pray about it. I'm going to say that. Um, I'll pray about it. Text me those things. <laughs> it's teach. So um, it's just about the mindset. It, so remember the assignment I gave y'all is to write down. I'm about to order a cleanser. Okay, so you know I'm in Florida. So if the cleanser won't get to you until the first week of uh january just to make sure but i'll put in some extra in for you i should uh, we can fellowship together we can definitely fellowship together i don't mind that i'm gonna pray about it because i want because i'm i don't play about god's word and i feel like i will be responsible for y'all kind of like really putting on a bible study y'all looking to me to articulate some things so i really wanted to be moved by god like i don't want to put too much and i don't want to start it and then leave y'all dry like oh no and i'm not consistent with it because other things that are obligations come before that and i don't want to leave it i don't want to drop y'all because the worst feeling is thinking you're a part of a community and then you feel like somebody dropped you and then you you have this sort of resentment because a lot of times that happens in church and people end up church hurt so i don't i want to i care for y'all i really do i want everybody to just see themselves as God sees them. Because I remember when I was in a low place. I remember when I didn't believe in myself. I remember when I was depressed. I remember when I felt so broken. Not only was I broke in spirit, but I was broke re in reality, literally. So I just remember that. And when I like to say I wasn't raised in church because I want people to know that nobody didn't force me to this thing. Nobody didn't teach me about this thing. My parents didn't force me to go to church. I chose God and I saw what he could do for me. And I'm not talking about materialistic things. I'm talking about what he did on the inside of me, how he took that depression off of me, how he let me know that I'm worthy of love. It's just a supernatural feeling that I can't even put into words, but God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. Even on my worst day, I still proclaim that God is so good because he found it fit for me to be here today god is so good and just if we remain steadfast if you remain keep going if you just do not give up and you continue to pursue god and you continue to believe in the things that god already um said about you it's all in the word and you don't go you don't waver off of that word because once you say yes i believe don't go uh, don't don't go uh against what you said that you believe because then you become double-minded and I want to say this is just like, once you say you believe it, leave it there and you work towards it. That's moving by faith. That is moving by faith. I don't know why it's blocking some people's comments. I don't, my TikTok is so weird. So I want y'all to just believe, believe in yourself, believe it. And I know a lot of y'all have gone through worse things than me. 
Some of y'all have gone through some things in y'all childhood that has tormented y'all to y'all adulthood. And y'all feel like y'all cannot break free because these things is haunting y'all memories. Y'all feel like y'all can y'all want to protect yourself because nobody can protect you when you were a child. But I'm telling you, God wants you to be free. That is not a part of your identity. God, God wants you to live a life of freedom, to know that you are loved, that what happened to you is not a part of your identity. It's not your identity. Yes, it happened to you, but you you got to snap out of it because that's not who you are. It happened to you, but that's not who you are. And I want y'all to forgive those people who hurt y'all because it's it's not when I know y'all hear that they hear this a lot that is not for them. And I know it's probably so hard to let go, but when I tell you the freedom, the enemy wants you to be prideful and hold on to that unforgiveness. Oh, they hurt me. They did this to me. But when you let go like, "Ah, you did that to me because you thought you was going to kill me." Oh, Sorry, TikTok, I didn't mean to say that. You thought you were going to unalive me. You thought I would be broken forever. You thought I wouldn't get to where God needed me to be. Because you did that to me. You were you you were sent by the enemy to kill my destiny. But I, I woke up another day. That that's, that's just evidence enough that God did not give up. And I should not give up on me either. That God still have purpose in me. That there's still purpose to be fulfilled on the inside of me. That because I woke up another day, that is more evidence enough. No matter what is going on in my life, that I woke up, I have breath in my body. That's more than enough to know that what I went through in my past did not break me. Because I'm still here standing. It tried to, but it failed. The weapons formed, but it, not, it did not prevail. Come on. Listen, y'all, I'm just so excited. I, I, I don't want, I want y'all to be all excited for this new season because 2024, I want y'all to have a made up mind to change, to allow God to transform you. Because if you do not allow God to transform you, because I don't know, I don't care if you go into the gym, you read all these books, but until you allow God into your heart, into those deep places, into those places that you don't allow anybody in. You would never get to where he needs you to be because it's some certain things, certain branches that need to be pruned off of you. you. You need to go through the pruning season and your pruning season may just be a month. But are you willing to go through the process? Your season, pruning season may be all of 2024. You just never know. It, 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 but are you willing to go through the process? Your breakthrough is at the end of it. Only he can do it. You got to trust that God is going to do it for you and what you're believing him for everything. I want you to just to say thank you. Even on your worst day, just say thank you. Be And I want you to picture those things, what the life you want to live like is coming. Because you want a house. You have a vision for a house that you never been in. Nobody in your family ever lived in. That vision, that want, that desire didn't come from nowhere. That desire was put on the inside of you from God to know that you're capable of more. You're capable of living in this place. I want you here. So I want you to believe that it can happen for you, but you got to be on your way. You got to be on your way. I want you to believe in those things. Think bigger. Think bigger. Think crazy. I well, pass my crazy faith for real. Like you just don't know what God wants to do for you. Your best. God wants to do above that. God's standards. We're looking at God's standards for ourselves, our life. God's standards is way better than our own. I'm going to be out. But again, my uh, ebook is linked in my bio. Um, if you already got it or if you feel like you don't need it, it's buy it for a friend. Christmas is not over. The giving season is not over. It's called the Circle Detachment Technique. It's a step-by-step -step guide on how to break free from soul ties, uh, toxic cycles, and self-sabotaging habits. It's in my bio. And each person that has that has bought my ebook, which is on sale right now for just $19.99. If you buy my ebook, when it comes on sale on, on, uh, on an actual book on Amazon, you get first dibs. And of course you're gonna get a you're gonna get a deal. Cause you know, I love to give the girls deals. But I love y'all. I still didn't eat all day. I'm so scared. I'm excited. Um I'm excited because I'm not laying down. I'm I'm going after Whatever God tells me to do, and I know I'm I'm called to influence people's life in the in in a good way, God's way. So I'm excited for what God is going to do in me, and I'm not giving up. I'm going to start what I finish. I'm not going to be lazy. I'm not going to sit on my gifts. I'm not just saying this. I want y'all to receive this for y'all lives as well. 
You are beautiful. You are worthy. You are beautiful. You are worthy. You are successful. You are wealthy. You are the head and not the tail. You are the, a, a, a lender and not a borrower. We're not borrowing from anybody in this next season. We're, we're paying back all of our debts. That we will be debt free. We will learn how to manage our monies. Before you become a millionaire, you have to learn how to manage the little that you are blessed with right now. Because if you if you can't manage the little money, how can he trust you with more? God don't want that blessing to become a struggle for you. That God don't want you to mishandle the blessing when he bless you. That's why he has to give it to you in due season. In, in the right season because you have to go through the process. Don't be afraid of going through the process because it's better. It is to prune you. It's to, it's to edify you. It's to build you up. Okay. I love you, ladies. I love you, ladies. I love you, the men that are on here as well. And I want you to love yourself. I want you to be gentle with yourself. I want you to know that you are worthy. I want you to believe in yourself. I want you to trust yourself because if you cannot trust yourself, you will not make the right decisions. And the reason why you can't trust yourself because you don't know who you are and you're thinking you're making these decisions by yourself because you have made so many wrong decisions in the past and it has left you broken. But I want you to begin to trust yourself and heal from the past traumas that you have been experiencing. I love y'all. Until next time. No. Okay. I'm glad they blocked your comment and nobody can see it because you're negative. Thank you. Love y'all.